Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Um, a guest that we all know, uh, Luke. Luke, as always, mate, it's been a pleasure. I know we, uh, you, you, you work and acting career and stuff like that, mate. It's trying to juggle around to get you back on, but uh, manage the situation, mate. I mean, it's a disaster what's happened, and it? it's like self capitulated. It's like we're just imploding, mate. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know when we last spoke specifically in terms of, um, how far we were gone, but you know, I think Collins were, I think we were drifting around playoffs just before Christmas. Um, and for me, um, there's a there's a whole host of factors as to why we're in the position that we're in. Um, um, it's been coming really. I think since for this season, since the day that we lost against Wednesday in the playoff final, in my opinion. Um, because we didn't prepare for this season properly, um, we seem to have fallen back even further mm. than when we were under Stendhal. In my opinion, it's a worse team. Um, under Stendhal, we had a vision when we we're going to go in League One in terms of brand of football, what we were going to play this season under Collins. We've had no vision or strategy in terms of how to win a game. A plan B. I know Stendhal were that to a degree, but that style of play that he brought on were ideal for that league at that time. Um, and there's, there's there's still players in that team. You know, I would say there's still five or six lads from last year that are in that side. So there's some that's not there that were there last year. Um, obviously, we're going to different factors that I feel that. Have brought us to this stage, but I feel that we're we're further behind than any. Uh, I think it's probably one of the lowest points of the, of the club, in, in in my opinion, since I can remember. Like just the apathy that you can feel towards the football club um, at the moment is just uh, all time high. I think you know when I first started calling the actions of the of the board was 2017, I think, when the first appointed Maurice Eckingbottom left. And I believe he left because he, he knew what were coming. And people go, well, you, you know, I'm, I'm going back years. This is yes. this is relevant to where we're at now. Because this the, this, the same affiliates are, are, a bit, are linked to the people that were at the club at that time. Um, and... I saw the I saw the signs then. They made the first appointment. They got it wrong, and then from then on in, we went on a we they kind of covered it up. We're bringing Stendhal in, and we still we had a championship side in, in the league. We had a stronger championship side then with under Stendhal than we did under Eckingbottom, which was strange. I don't. We had more come back, and we had more coming that January, and players in form at the right time. And to be fair, all that. We're a perfect season under Stendhal because we obviously got automatically promoted, and then again we just went back to to going down that route of you know thinking about the the, the pound coin first, not investing properly, and you know I'm I've always been somebody that's 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 been a, an advocate looking at how other clubs work, and you know not taking um, kind of a weakness out of that, and looking at how clubs work properly, and seeing what other clubs do well. And I always thought the Brentford model would have suited us quite well, where we bring lads in, we sell them on for a higher fee, which is what we did, but we always sold them for a higher fee, but not enough. So I was always left the self, self, self sorry, short changed. And then we bring lads in on loan that do, that do well for us, but then we're kind of, we're back to plan, we're back to square one then, aren't we? Because whenever they do well for us, they leave that void like last season with Eisted. Did really well when he came in. I think Collins were a bit unlucky, to be fair. He's obviously done really well at Coventry, but that loan signing, we, we kind of expected him to then join again this summer. And then due to obvious reasons, he didn't. And then with McAtee this season, there's going to be a void left there because he, for me, he's a player that reminds me a bit of Amal, that he can win a game on his own in terms of he can just have that bit of magic. He can't do it on, on his own, but I think he, he's, I, I like him for me. I think he should have been our player of the year. Over De over De Um I, I think if some, you know, I I think he's got better as the season's gone on, but we'll obviously we'll get to that. But 
I feel that this has been coming for a long time. You know, like I said, I started calling it out. I think first game properly, I did it. We're not not Forest away, and I were there that day, and I spent a lot of money over then the next course of seasons, and just saw just the club fading from what I knew. The identity was was starting to disappear. What we're all about, which is hard work, you know, wearing pride for the shirt, players just leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, and all, they've, they've always left, and we've always been a selling club, you know. Even you know, I my mean, dad's been with since the seventies. This it's always been that way. But there were, a, you know, Barnsley were a club of respect. You know, we even when I was growing up in nineties and two thousands, and even under when we went through that administration period, those st- we still could attract, you know, a good crowd regularly in League One. We were still a respected club, and now, if, whenever it, you know, I feel that. We, we threw threw all that away, and you know, over the course of the last five to six years, you know, we have just the amount of you know, it's you, you can't I can't count the amount of issues that this club's created on their own, and you, you start to look at individuals, and and, and then you know. Each individual that's been brought in, you look. You look at Khalid. We're out of his depth. He'd never, you know, he were chief exec, for instance. They brought him in. He'd never had any experience for English football, you know, and he struggled. And but he also lied out of back. You know, he also just lied to you know to the fans, and he's just didn't just were more bothered about other side of things, you know. It's just you know just to encapsulate it because I, there's that much going on in my head that's yeah, gone wrong yeah. over the last six seven years. It's just been a shit show, and the fans deserve better. You know, there's a lot of people who spent a lot of money following that football club up and down the country. Tuesday, Saturday nights, all over. You know, and not for a great brand of football. And they don't do it because we're watching Prime Barcelona. They do it because they love the club and they deserve better. And I thought that. You know, I took a step away um, under Ash Bargy in, I think it was Boxing Day, and I, I you know, and it was when the start, it's when they moved the fans from East Stand uh, to the no, to the to the East Stand from the West Stand. Sorry, yeah. and said it was due to structural changes. Then that same week, I think we played with Peterborough at home, and I think it were a, 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 I think it were around Christmas, and that same stand were then being sat in and used by players that weren't playing. And also by board, so I'm thinking, well, how come you're moving fans out of here? Mm. Um, it, you know, and they were just, and then it passed an health and safety, you know, executive test the week before they actually, so it weren't actually deemed unfit. It just were deemed that needed necessary changes to be made. Mm. But then they decided just to close the whole stand. It would, it's just, you know, I think we're Sheffield United actually watched. We played at home. We lost three two. Um, Devante Cole got a goal in the Akremba. Um, I think it were under Joseph Lauman but, um, when he went interim coach for a while. Um, and I was just like, I've had enough of this. I can't keep doing it. Um, and then under Duff, I think they realised the, their errors that, you know, Conway and Lee had left, but I still think they're involved. And I'll get to that, you know, I, I, I question what's gone on recently and the links to what's gone on recently, yeah. you know, as to why I, I'll, I'll come to that conclusion. But I think if we go back to Duff, you know, I think it was a shrewd appointment. I think they actually listened to the fans for the first time in a long time. I think though before there was this arrogance and this stubbornness and this, you know, this kind of refusal to budge from there. It was kind of like, we're doing it our way. And it not worked. It not worked. The, the spreadsheet had not worked where they were bringing players in from random places. And they have done that this season. They brought two centre defenders in and then they brought a lad in on loan from Rotherham, probably same ability wise, but they've kept the lad on loan from Rotherham for the full season. And yet we've let two of our lads go out on loan yeah. when it, they should, they, and then we've then been a defender short for January. We bring Pines in. It, it turns out you can't play two games a week. We are getting crocked. And then we're a defender short then. And then it's too late because we've already got two lads out on loan. So that's that's just one example of how the recruitment and how the way that we've worked for the, the last 12 months has gone on. I feel if we go to Wednesday afterwards, I'm thinking, right, if we can keep Duff, we can build a team around the same lads that got us to that final. I think, well, you know, for me, minimum top two. Mm. And look, we, we were in a shout for top two. 
even going into the second half of the season. Yeah. You know, Colin, yeah. Collins had come in, never mind number one. I never expected him to come in. Nobody would have done. You know, I remember him as a player, steady as your goal defender. Mm. You know, his personality were, you know, let's say it weren't exactly exciting, were it, you know. Um, and, but I was like, well, you know what, we've got to get behind him. And I, I do, I do empathise with him a little bit, even in the summer. I don't think they backed him enough. No. Um, we brought lads in, but we brought lads in from. We bought Laparta in as a free agent who never played at that level before. Basically, not we brought, style, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we brought in. Um, is it Shepherd um, from Pontefract? Yeah. And uh, you know, look, there's, 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 he's got potential, but isn't he's, he's not nowhere near ready? He should have been loaned out immediately to uh, Halifax mm. for the season, or you know, a national league side, and then come back. You know. We've bought that loft house in and he's actually done well on loan. I reckon he'll, he'll feature next year. Mm. But we we haven't got the we haven't got the 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 kind of luxury to be spending wages on players that's then six months time you realise that they're not ready yet, so then you send them out on loan. But you're still playing those pay you play, you're still using those wages and we lost big players like Anderson, you know, Kitchen who who, who actually improved under under Duff considerably. Mm. Um Collins, who'd been at the club for a, for a few years, you know, Eister didn't come back. Bobby Thomas didn't come back from his loan, and he was an influential player at the back. So we, we more or less lost his full back four, yeah. and so and your keeper. So we we didn't replace them properly, um, and I still don't feel that we have because that's our major area of weakness as the season's gone on. That's been where we've come unstuck, um, and you, you, you saw it coming in the summer. Um, but again, because they haven't got the knowledge of, of you know, oh, I think for a certain number of reasons, I think we're in that position again where it's his own worst weakness. But if I'm going to Duff, I'm thinking, right, they can back him, then we can go for top two. That was my aim this year with top two, and that's the standard that the club should have set. And unfortunately, I, you know, does, you know, the Duff left for Swansea, you know, it were out of character. He's never done that in his career before. And it could only happen to us. But I also think if he fully believed he were full, and people go, well, it's always going to go to a championship side. But I also believe that if 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 he was sold a vision of where we're going to be, and I, I believe he would have stayed. Um, but I also believe he knew what he was working with, and so therefore the the fact that it were a league higher, better pay probably. Well, it it would have been, mm. and also the fact that he knew what he was working with this season. Um, I think we're, we're, we're deciding factors. And then Collins comes in, you know, we, we, we're staying around the playoffs. We, we, we're playing that absolutely awful brand of football, but we're, we're, we're fourth or fifth. And I'm thinking, well, you know, Wednesday went up this seat, you know, last season, not playing great football, but they churned out results. And away from home, we were really good. But at home, for some reason, we just don't turn up and we seem to, it's like an away game and at home we, we, we're, we're like it's an home game. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, it, it, obviously, that away form's gone as well. But, you know, when we were on that unbeaten, we, we, every away game, I felt like we were going to win. And we mm. we had that, you know, and it were a shoe in that we were going to win. And, and we more or less did. And I'm thinking, well, if we can recruit in January, you know, just stay there and there about. But we need four or five players. So we got early and thought it were a good sign at the time. First month, we were on fire. Roberts had come back because um, Killip's not good enough <laughs> for this standard, but he we we managed to call him for a few weeks. Got Roberts back. We got Pines in, big big lad at the back, you know, um, good attributes, you know, and he'd come in, he'd done well first few games. And I'm thinking, right, well, we need a midfielder and we need another striker, and we need, in my opinion, we needed to change the formation. Yeah. Um, and go to a back four because Williams into centre defender, um, and I thought we're there and there are and they didn't in, when it mattered in the last few days of the transfer window when Portsmouth and Derby recruited and got stronger. Even Bolton, they recruited and strengthened, and we didn't do that. And that showed to me the intent to where if they really wanted to, that have that have backed the manager because the manager did well with the resources that he had. And obviously, towards the end of Collins' tenure, the brand of football got worse. The players seemed to not be playing for him. It just didn't seem to work. He started to say stuff in the media that just didn't make sense. He were not letting Jarlow play as much as I would have liked because I felt that whenever he were on the pitch, 
we were a better team. And I always, I mean, you know, as we saw with John Stones, don't matter how old you are, if you're good enough, get them on pitch. Yeah. Um, it's not always worked that, that like that because we've played players over the years that's not been good enough and yet we're demon ready because it's a sell-on fee. But for Jarlo, I reckon he's better than what we've got, you know, at the moment up there. Mm. Um, and so that, therefore I thought he weren't playing him enough and I think he were too um, cautious towards the end. But I also feel that, <laughs> you know, now now what we've found out, we've we sacked him. Um we a game to go left in season, and I think well, you should if you if you're gonna sack him, do it six weeks before to give us a good chance. Yeah, you know, if they're gonna sack him, do it. You know, for me, it's what as soon as we drew that game against Bolton, when we should have gone for a third goal and we didn't, and we sat back and rested on his laurels, and, and we we played for a point when we were two 0 up at half time, and I couldn't get it. I'm thinking, you know. What where's that mentality to not go and get that third goal? And we didn't get that third goal, and they they could have won that game, and we were holding on. And then we got hammered at home by Lincoln, we, you know. And then it, obviously the, all them games that we drop points, it's obviously you know everyone knows about. But I'm thinking then, then it's over to the club. Then there was obviously starters to be Collins out, chance and stuff like that, and then they've acted on it. But it, it seems like they've had this moving for a while, you know, to get rid of him and to bring him in. But then, obviously, we're going to talk about that and then the rest of it since then. I just think if you're going to do that, do that six weeks. You, it, it's the timing and it's the fact that you've you've left us in a, in a worse position than when we were, in my opinion, than when we had Collins. Because Collins, even though his brand of football were poor, if, you, if you're going to get rid of him, in my opinion, you may as well have kept him until the end of the season. Yeah. And if we're going to lose in playoffs, then you get rid of him as, as soon as that second game at Bolton's done. If we're going to lose in playoffs, yeah. Um, but now we're in a position where we've got no momentum, we've got no form. We scrape through. Can't you know? I put a thing on Twitter saying it's kind of like going being in recovery position and having the faintest of pulses and crawling over the line. But yet they're making out as if that's a, as if it's an achievement to finish six. Mm. And standard of football in League One's been terrible this season. Terrible. Like Portsmouth and Derby, fair play to you know, I, I didn't I didn't look at any team this season and think, you know, like they're you know, they're gonna coast it. I looked at Ipswich last year mm. and, and even Plymouth to a degree last year and thought, yeah, you know, they're you know, they're a better standard than us, clearly. But I I didn't look at any team and think that they're miles beyond us better. They were yeah. better organised and, and just had more confidence and more momentum and just recruited better. Um, but what other team does that then? Sacks the manager, gets a lad in, you know, and, and this is, again, you know, I don't mind foreign managers, but for me, they've got to have experience in English football, you know. Um, it's worked with Stendhal, you know, cause it, it, in, but it's kind of like, you look at Ash Bargy and Shop, so each, each, each selection of a manager is always a gamble, yeah? no matter whether they're a foreign coach or a British coach, each, no matter what appointment, is a gamble, but specifically when they're from the continent, because it's going to take them a, a longer time, in my opinion, to settle and to get on board with the players and what they're going to do. Because with Duff and Collins, you can kind of see they've both got us playoffs in a way, mm. you know, you know, and that should be the, the bare minimum. I'm glad that the, that, that manager's not coming. Um... But it's only because of the incompetence of the club, and we'll then then just go back to what the root problem is, and you know it's the people behind the scenes. You've got to start taking those layer onions off and be like, the you know the players have got to be responsible for their performances on the pitch. Of course they have, and a lot of them should be ashamed of the way that they conducted themselves over the last few weeks. They just look like they don't give a shit. Um. Collins has got to with his team selection, his formation, and you know his his boring brand of football. But we knew what we, we were getting with that. But also, then I then I then you've got to start asking who employed him in the first place, who brought him in, who thought he were appropriate, and who who didn't back him in the summer, who didn't back him in January, and it's those people behind the scenes. It's the same people. It's the same people linked to the people that were kicked out of the club two years ago. You know. And, you know, when Conway Lee had left that, I was thinking, right, fresh start. But I'm also, I was still worried because there were still people involved at the club 
that were involved when them two would come in at the time. And I'm thinking we need a, a completely free, clean slate, a completely clean slate. And we didn't get that, but I'm thinking, right, it's better than no, I'll, I'll take it. But as, the, as time's gone on, it's just showed that the people behind the scenes are just not fit to run the club. And then, and I'll you know I'll say you know and there's there's facts there and there's events that's taken place that back up what I say because to do it once you be, every every person makes a mistake you're human but to keep making basic errors amateur amateur standard errors it's just not good enough and they need to be held accountable um, but unfortunately it's a model where. Fans aren't on the ball in Germany. They are where it's you know forty nine fifty one. You know, so fans have got much of the bigger say. Unfortunately, un unless fans vote with the fee, which they started to do, well, especially for tomorrow, um, as as a way of letting the club know what they feel, then you know it should. Unfortunately, until they decide to go, you know, it, we, we, we kind of lump with them, but it's it's just shit, mate. Like we'll obviously go into the um, the, the the tall hammer situation now but you know i've obviously taken 20 minutes to because obviously to encapsulate what's going on yeah. but it's just it, it, it's di difficult to watch it's difficult to watch and um it's it's sad i feel like it's just it's just a sad moment and i just feel like we should be excited you know for tomorrow we should be like you know 100 you know 200 you know three games of football win them win championship but then i think well, there's the issue. Even if we win, will the backers? Even if we went up, would the backers appropriately? No, the one. So then I think, what's point getting promoted? Then, then I question that. <laughs> and yeah. that, you know, and then, and then I think, well, we may as well win a few games in League One than get whooped every week because this team ain't ready for the championship because they're just not. Yeah, I mean, like you say, you you, you like gone right back to like 2017 and everything like that and I'll, I'll try and catch up to speed and and back but I can see the, the things as well the, the worrying things and we're still paying for price like now and I said off air for me we're two or three seasons behind every season we go past it's like we're playing catch up yet again you look at the teams around us such as like you and it pains me to say it but you look at Wednesday I have their fate in for the life stopping championship you look at Ipswich I know they go, uh, you know I think we need one point to go up back-to-back -back promotions, no parachute payments. You've got to invest time into your manager and also back as, as a board, back your manager and look at the quality of what we've done. And it's about standards and work ethics. It seems at times, Barnsley, for me as a fan, and travelling up and down is like, where's the standard? Where's his identity? You go back to 2017, we're still paying price now and we'll get on about the VFL charges from else this season. It's been like a complete shit fest, one issue after another, or oh, my fake up disaster. Again, fans still waiting for refunds and that. It's like radio silent, but it's like, oh, we've just got into the playoffs. And it's like, oh, we've just got in. It's an achievement. Is that your standards then? That you just get into the playoffs and what, what is your vision? And you, you go back, and I'm going back to like Conway and Lee, like I said, Via, we're still paying the price for this now, regardless of what people say about, well, we've mm. only got minority in this. Not we're, we're still paying the price for it now. Is that. All this ownership, you know, being more transparent and yet we're having to, this season, where it should have been from last season at Wembley, from where we were, is like, right, Anderson were going to go, but I thought we got decent money for Lee Kitchen and that. But for everything to go and not get properly invested and get fobbed off, we're like, well, we're getting installments by a million pound. A million pound what? Every six months, every year? How, how can you let, like, a captain... And like your, your vice captain is in Anderson and Kitchen both go. Bearing in mind Anderson's got to Luton in Premier, so they've got like all TV money rolling and over fist. Yeah, we're willing to take installments on it. If we go out and I don't mean be disrespectful to Ponty Colliers, Workshop Town, you know you're looking at uh, Andy Dallas. You're fetching these lads in. All the Shaw from Scotland who, who can't it form. There's, there's Max Waters or oh, used to be a three million pound player, but he's shot for confidence. It seems to be that we're getting quantity rather than quality. And I'm thinking, if I'm looking at Duff and I'm thinking, like, if I'm going to be end up getting this, what's the point of me being here? Because I know that my head's going to be on block if I don't meet, you know, top two, which it should have been. Like I said, Via, at Wembley, feel good factor with Via. I thought Duff brought in a key personnel, i.e. Norwood, a shit house of a player, but he knew what yeah. to do. 
He brought out the best in players. I thought he also played in pool of players as well. Like I said, via Kitchen, I thought he got best out of him. Luke O'Connell, Irby Kane, he got he brought players in who you knew and understood. Phillips being one of them from Burnley. He also knew Bobby Thomas from Burnley. So he knows the leagues, he knows the EFL, he knows the standard, what he wants to implement is his style of brand on there. And that's where we got. Duff went, Collins, he came in, and this is what you got to deal with. And you knew, come January, that as soon as he could get some players in, he got the, he got the players out who were been playing. Because for, I won't say no good, but weren't up the standard. Shepard went. Well, there the weren't his signings either. Exactly. Kappa so went out on loan. She Shepard went out on loan. Kyle and Lofthouse got recall and went back out on loan. So I'm thinking that, that Collins, as much as his, he had a, a bad card to deal with, I thought he did well with the squad, un, unbalanced squad as well. When you look at it. So lightweight at centre defence, but we're obviously still attacking players for shipping them out on loan, and one can't even get his squad as in Max Waters because he's out of form. Yet in January, right, second half of the season, we need some better class of player in. Pines come in, Conor Grant come in, that were it. And I'm like, and like what you just said there, you look at the other teams around us, they're recruiting because they want to push on that next level, that next mm -hmm. step. We were. We're accepting it, but we'll, we'll look what we can get by. Like we have done it past. See if the pound signs, let them go. Art on installments as it as it proves right now. And yet we're, we're skimping and scratching about for like a free agent market or you know, a loan, which McAtee, he'll be going back to, you know, uh, he'll be going back to his parent club. What someone who's like I like severe, he gets bones off seats, he can see passionate lad. We're having a, a no disrespect. We've got Liam Roberts as his number one goalkeeper, who's not our keeper as such, as a long keeper. So again, you you got Jane McCarty and you got you loaning players out, but we're fetching it's such a, a topsy turvy thing. And then you look at VFL charges, which is like almost seriously like going radio science and spread from the carpet until it happens, which we're tell we're gonna be end of April, beginning of May, which the fans will be like all up in uproar once again. This happens, but it's not new. But it's just that we put a spin on it. We put a well, we're in playoffs and we're trying to get to Wembley and all this and that other. You look at then the FA Cup fiasco where we've been expelled for an, an eligible player, which it comes round again is what's happening at the club. Who's taking accountability? Prime example, Talama. There's only Barnsley what can get shut to a manager with one game to go. See if we can get it playoffs, and then every red, red replacement bit looks in it all to come round to say, Oh, well, we can't get a work permit, so we're back to the drawing board yet again. I would rather have, although his brand of football were crap and fans were baying for him, and but I mean, I would have uh, Burton away and Blackpool away, and fans had turned. But like you've said, just said there, for me, they've left us in a worse position now than it even what with Collins in, and like you said, there. Where's his momentum going into the playoffs? Where's his uh, the mental state of players? Players with sends who were playing and running through brick walls for Duff last season. They're still at Barnsley now. I don't see that. I just see this, like, we'll go through up motions. We'll just do what we need to do. Are they thinking, right, who's Gaffer was going to be coming in? Because if I'm out of contract, I'm not going to mm. pick up an injury. I'm not scooping a potential move away. I'm not saying that they are doing that, but me as a fan, I'm watching it. I'm seeing why are you getting to, uh, tackling. Why are you, do you can see him. You can see the mental state. You can see the players. All this way, obviously, uh, with Devaney, sorry, before uh, Northampton game. Oh, well, players will be able to express things and shackles will be off. I'm thinking shackles should be off. <laughs> players should be out there playing, but you could see that. We could see that sideways, backwards, sideways, backwards. They weren't suited to players. Players weren't happy. Has it been play power? It's also determined this. I don't know. But for me, this with Talhammer, and you look at the links, what he's got with the previous owners, I'm thinking we're going back years to how we, we operated before under Aspargian shop. Why didn't we move on from Duff and say, look, we've identified this player, uh, this manager, a foreign coach, fine, but he's had the understanding of the FL League. And that's a big, that's a massive gap for me. Yeah. Whether whether we are going to appoint now, or whether it's going to be, there's rumours going to Duff and this and that. Whether the manager will be coming in now, I don't envy him one bit 
having to deal with the shit what's going to be coming his way. Well, it's like, like a situation rebuild job for me. Oh. Well, it's like the exact same feeling as when Duff came in, you know, Michael Duff came in the first time, like having to start from the ashes again. And, you know, and this is what frustrates me the most, that they actually, it seemed like they were listening and they, they took a bit of accountability and were like, we've got to get the trust back of the fans. And then, so therefore, they gave Duff a lot more control over recruitment, rightly so. I think that that should be 50-50 yeah. with every football club. But specifically with us, we usually, the coaches realise that they're not getting the, the amount of control that they want. And then they, re, they do well with a, with a team that's not doing great. They realise that they're better than, than what we are. They've got bigger ambition and they leave. It's what usually happens, all the, all the shit. And we, we sack him because they've got no more option. But to bring in a guy, you know, the, I felt I, I felt a bit for Devaney because he had one game, one game, and, you know, it looks like he'll, he'll be in charge tomorrow. But last game of the season, a lot of pressure. You know, he shouldn't have said what he said about, like, you know, you know, he should have said we're just going to do the best we can to win that game of football by Ocorcrell rather than we're laying shackles off because they did mm. the complete opposite. You know, it were a very poor performance against Northampton and I think they, they bottled it. The players then have got to take responsibility because over yeah. numerous yeah. times of the season they've bottled it when it matters. But like you said, it doesn't surprise me that they've made that error. I mean, we brought in that director of football and I'm thinking, right, I've been shouting out for that for years. So in the in the theory of bringing that post in, great, you know, because that's a link between the board and the chief exec and the and the manager, mm -hmm. rather than it being the chief exec doing everything, because that's what used to happen where we had a manager, uh, a chief exec that were doing behind the scenes and also recruitment. They have no knowledge of English football, like Khalid were doing recruitment of players and they didn't have a clue. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I, could, I couldn't. Imagine Khalid playing for Wisbury Bridge. You know, he doesn't, he didn't seem like the type of player that ever played at a decent standard. But I'm thinking, right, that's what I wanted a director of football that played the game. You know, somebody that knew the leagues, someone that could be a good, you know, communicator between the board and, and the management. We brought Malad and Somaz in, um, mates with James Crime, by the way. Um, and it's not what you know, it's who you know, into, in, in a matter mm -hmm. what industry we're in but whatever mm. they brought him in and i thought right give him a chance his first first appointment in terms of his first task got it wrong it's the basic stuff like surely you look at since brexit the the, the work permits have been different for players and coaches they have to pass yeah. a certain criteria surely they knew that and especially after the way that they got the fa cup debacle wrong mm -hmm about fielding Aidan Marsh when he were been alone at York and played in the game. Surely they'd look at things and do the due diligence. And it just it's just lazy. It comes across as lazy. It comes across as just amateur. No, that hasn't been learned, have they? No. And it just doesn't, you know, Narav came out saying Ed, kind of like Ed's a roll type thing after the Ocean thing, after that debacle. I, I don't know if they have. You know, and then it comes out about the points. Then the fans start to worry, is it going to be a points deduction at the start of next season? Mm. Um, or will it just be a fine? If the club don't know, then I suppose they can't say. But, you know, um, and I feel for the, I, I feel for Tollhammer in a way as well. That lad, that bloke's come over. I, I didn't want him. He, he, you know, I never heard of him before. But he'd come over to England to speak to us. They'd already got him more or less appointed, kind of a like, um, I think he was already here while Collins was still the manager. So I assume he'd been over more or less straight after the Blackpool game or that weekend. And they're going to get rid of Collins and appoint him. And they had the interview and everything. And then they realised that they didn't have the right paperwork and that he, he couldn't get a work permit. It's like, it's like, honestly, net, you know, Sunderland until I die on Netflix would be nothing. Yeah. Compared to yeah. Barnsley documentary on, on, on Netflix, then they've missed a trick, haven't they? Because yeah. it, it'd be prime time TV, it'd be, you know, it'd be, it'd be good entertainment for everyone else except us. Yeah. My worry is, Neil, that what we see on the surface level is probably nothing compared to the shit show behind the scenes. We only see the filtered through stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think if it's this bad and we're fans and we can only see what they tell us and what we find out yeah. due to it's things just having to be leaked or whatever. What is going on behind the scenes and what has been going on? I can remember Connor Chaplin saying basically, it's a great club, fans are amazing, but the clubs run like a shit show. They've got no ambition. 
they think they're somebody that they're not, and that's why he left. And then yeah. you know, yeah, I remember that. And and and, and I, I, we were like, wow, mm. a former player saying that, and that's why he celebrated when he scored against us because he he felt like that the players under Ishmael, I think that season, you know, when we got to the playoffs in the championship, they didn't, you know, the, you know, it just. It will, you know, Paul. What did what did Paul Conway say that year? It was kind of like it's not a big achievement to be finishing top six because we've not sold any players, we've not yeah. made any money that season, and it's like, right, that's that's kind of like the mo then of what we're about is just making money rather than actually achieving success, ambition. And then that does worry me again, though, the actual fact that they would have appointed somebody that would have been actively involved with Conway and Lee because you know he'd been at that club, he was at that club. Um. And then I think, why are we doing business with Conway and Lee? Should we not? We should be staying well clear of them. Mm. And it makes me think, why are we even thinking about doing that? And then it makes me think, are they really? Are they really? Have they really cut ties, mm. or are they a lot more involved? And it's just behind the scenes, just to kind of keep everything hush hush. Mm. Um, and for me, I've got no confidence in them moving forward. I don't trust anything that they could do moving forward. Um, the, you know, the, 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 like, they're just trying to cover, like we said before we started, we're getting former players on to get bums on seats for tomorrow because they know yeah. it is, it is, it is, they're shitting it because they know it's going to be, you know, um, people have had enough. Um, and, you know, Richie Wellens, you know, we're linked with him. And I don't believe we spoke to him, but again, it just goes to show you. I think managers and coaches look at us and think, right, well, they're going to have their hands tied as soon as they come in. And I think that we've kind of, this is what scares me, is that we've gone backwards than before, Duff. They've gone back to their old behaviours. It's kind of like somebody's got an addiction. They're in they're in remission for a bit. Or like the kind of, they've the gone teetotal for a while and, and then mm-hmm. something's happened, they've had a bad breakup and then, the, the slowly like starting to go down that spiral, and I think you know that's what <laughs> I know that's a weird analogy, but that's what I feel like. The, no, no, the, yeah, you know what I mean. The, they're starting to make the same mistakes. Just the kind of haphazard. We don't give a fuck about the fans. Anybody that speaks out about the club we gets a ban. That you know, or they get blocked on social media. It's kind of like all the positive things. It's like right, we would be positive if we actually had something positive to you know to to be, to be positive about. Mm. And what, what, you know, it's kind of like this this rhetoric of kind of, we can only say positive things and, you know, you're a bad fan if you speak out. And it's like, I speak out the way that I do is because I love the football club so much that I'd rather stay away and, and, and not witness what's going on compared to going, you know, each, each to their own. But that's my way of showing my love to the club is because I can't bear to see what's going on. I can't see it in person. Um. And for, for so long, it's been a, a kind of, it's been difficult not to go to the games, but, if, but they forced me to, you know, they, mm. their their actions and just the constant lack of wanting to improve things, it's just, got, it's just got me to this place. And I think there's so many other people that are in the same position that they feel like they've got no other option, but not, you know, season tickets. The, the, they've got the you know that issue like they've got the they've got the cheat to start mentioning season tickets for next season when it's kind of like if you just they just don't read the room and and that's mm. the thing is that they just they just don't get the I think the thing that I don't I don't know who they speak to I don't know if they just speak to the supporters trust that's in their pocket or you know the people that's kind of like just happily you know you know kissing up to them to kind of get a feel as to what the fan base is about but. I would say a vast ninety percent of us, they just don't get it. They just do not get us, and it felt like that they were getting us when they brought Duffy in and they started to act differently off the pitch and recruitment were a lot better. And it's just gone back to their old behaviours, and in, in the, and that applies to, to to the crimes as well. And let me just say this: like Patrick, I really respected you know for what he did for the club, but for me, we need a completely clean slate. They all need to go. You know, and people go, who's going to come in? And it's like, well, that's, you know, I'm not, I don't get paid enough or I haven't got enough influence to suggest who should come in and take over the club. But in an ideal world, they would be leaving immediately and we we, we start again because, you know, I I can't see how this is going to get better. 
unfortunately, and it's negative. It's it's you know it's not it's not a positive conversation that we're having before Bolton, but it needs to be said. It needs to be called out. We can't they can't keep hiding. They've got to take accountability. And the fact that they've just gone completely quiet and they've got nobody in for tomorrow. You know, the fact is that, you know, Devaney probably didn't expect to be caught, you know, to be taking charge tomorrow. But he's, but he's got no other option. And I've, I'm looking at the last performance. I'm not very confident, mate. Um, Bolton are coming in good form. Ian Everett's a good coach. He's done really well with them. They've got a good side. Um, big lads. They've got good midfielders. Um, and I know we've, we're unbeaten against them this season. We drew twice. Um, but I just feel timing's everything. And they 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 pushed Derby close to get second. You know, we crawled over the line in the end. Yeah. Lads that should be turning up and not calls. You know, like you said, it, it just do not bother his body. It, maybe that's the way there is, but body language. You know, it, it, you know, for me, I'm thinking you're you're his main striker. You, you know, you should be running your ass off if this is your last. If you think if, if these are your last few games, put everything in and then be like, you know what, I'm off. Fair enough. You know, and McAtee he's running around like an endless chicken constantly, and it's like he's a lone player. Yeah. You know, he's setting the standard. You know, for lads that are contracted players, and I'm just starting to think. Will they will they believe in a tackle in? Uh, I shouldn't be thinking this way, but I'm thinking, no. will they really put? Will they really gain the trenches and and, and when the chips are down, stand up for for the for the team when it matters? And you know what? We've got to get behind over the next two games. We've got to get behind the lads now and fuck the board and fuck the club and just get behind the lads that's wearing that shirt and even get behind this goal. I know Devaney. Some of his comments are very strange, and you know. I, I love Devaney, you know, as a player. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love watching him. He, he was one of my favourite players when I was growing up. Um, old school winger, you know, throwback. You know, he's, he's, he's kind of been left in a bad situation. Didn't help himself with those comments. But we were also getting, and I, and I know that there were a bit of a Barney in West Ham week, weekend and stuff like that, but it's, it's just some of the club up, mate, that, you know, mm. Fans are arguing with, with staff and stuff like that, and it's it, you know it's not oh, nice to see. No. We've got to put it to one side now. Next next hundred and eighty minutes and get behind those lads. And if we can get to Wembley, then then whatever. But at the same time, we've got to start to realise that you know we've got to start wh whatever happening in the future with these people at the club. You know, we've got to realise that this isn't good enough. You're looking at, I mean, kind of wrap it up like kind of thing because we've like come like full circle about the, the uh, you know, two games at Bolton and, you know, and about Wembley. So it kind of leads on to the next question where I'm going to ask to wrap it up, really. Uh, you're looking at the, from where we were last season at Wembley, you were hoping we were going to push on and make a statement and intent and, and, and really go for it this season. If out... I'm more fearful this season on where do we go because mm. I think we're in a a more precarious position and it pains to say it because we all want balance to well. I'm, I won't give, you know, I give out to watch him in championship competing against big lads like an Ipswich. But again, you look on where it starts from. It starts from the board having faith in the in the setup and then persevering it. You just mentioned here, Ian Everett. He'll be saving from missing out to playoffs. He'll, he'll be out for revenge and really want to make it count and get there. So that's the standard. And I don't see it. What is it? 10 managers in the last six years? Says a lot. It says a lot. Is that recruit well, you know, back him. Duff, I've got my own opinions on that. Why Duff left is that I feel that he won't want to get backed. And I think that will want to motivate him back to his. But when you look at the setup at Barnsley, right academy we've got, right setup, right surroundings, yeah. the, the ground. Why are you, oh, not why are we, but why is the board struggling? And we all know, answer you've touched on it there, is that a coach will be coming in, a manager could be coming in and be like saying, right, if I'm not going to be allowed to do this X, Y, Z, like Duff did, I'm going to be like a puppet just being, string, string being pulled. As soon as it goes tits up, I'm going to be out of my ass here. The players are going to sort out. And again, I, and I agree with you, until the board took accountability and their own failings and address that, which I thought they did with Duff, they listened, like I said, but now it seems to be like we've just gone back to the old blueprint that didn't work and we're hoping to fix yeah. the coaching who was going to fit in his 
ideal model and tick a box and go go with floor. But what's their model, though, Neil? Because there's only because their model speed, don't do we? Well, what's their model? But you know, then you're even questioning the model because the players that they do bring in on the cheap and, and think they don't only do it for for money. They're not very, not about making the team better. It's about making a bit of money and you know buying them for cheap and trying to sell them for a, for a bargain. But when them players aren't good enough even for that, it's like well that that models that model comes unstuck. You look mm. at Bolton like. Again, we're playing each other in the playoffs. You look at that they stuck to the guns, yeah. stuck with Ever, backed him again, and they're very unlucky not to get second. Um, but as structurally as a football club, they're secure. You know, they've got a manager there that's, you know, in that's what I've, I've said for years now is we need to have stability and you need to have a project and you need to stick yeah. to it. Not kind of like getting from transfer window to transfer window and, and hoping for the best, which is what we do. We hope for the best. We try and get over to the January, do a little bit of business, then get to the summer. But again, we're going to be losing Cole, Kane, Williams. Roberts is going back from his loan. McAtee, Makatos. You're looking at other lads as well. That's at least seven or eight art at first team that are involved that's going to be not here. And, you know, you're looking at likes of Phillips is going to attract interest. Connell. Um, you know... Win, but don't you? <laughs> this is the best situation that we're in, isn't it? Be and then you, you're back at square one again. You're back at, yeah. and, then, and it's kind of like, well, we can't keep doing it. Season after season, it's a rebuild. It shouldn't be that way. It's like, fair enough, if you're going over a transitional period, you do it once, you, you, you wipe the slate clean, and if you're going to let a couple of players go, you bring two or three in, and then you bring in, you add on with that, so you're like for like, like we did, you know, under Duff, where I felt that we, we we lost some players, but then we brought some players in in the January. We, we actually ended the season stronger than we started. Yeah. But then we knew that we were going to let Collins go because Henry's contract. Anderson and Kitchen, we kind of, especially Anderson, we knew we were going to go if we didn't go up. Hmm. But we didn't replace him. You know, we had we had all that money. We still got all that money, and they didn't they didn't put the put their hand in the pocket, and the other clubs did, and. Like like I've mentioned and you've mentioned in this video, they've gone back to their old behaviours and that's the most concerning thing is that they're alienating themselves again. And there's that massive all that, that bridge that they built back between the fans and between the fans and them, that, that trust that they started to build up is all being undone again. And I think that that's why it's worse than before, because it's like the fans actually might, might feel like idiots because a lot of them were like, right, I'll give them another chance. And then they have done, and then they've just gone back to their old ways. Um, and it'll be interesting to see next season how many season tickets we get mm. because my fear is that you know we should be going for Richie Wellens we should be able to we should be able to attract a Wellens that plays a good brand of football that he's done well at Leighton Orient you know he's established him from a League 2 team he won the league with them they did really well I think top I think they were 11 for something like that yeah, yeah. so really good first season in League 1 good pro you know we should be able to attract that type of manager and the fact that we can't, with all due respect to Leighton Orient, they've been in the lower leagues for a few years. They've had a lot of issues themselves. The fact that we can't offer them that project says a lot. And the fact that we should be having coaches left, right and centre, like we've got. We've got a great academy set up. We've got really good mm -hmm. facilities for League One. You know, we've got a really good blueprint there. You know, yeah. the frameworks have been a really... And go, we need to go back to what makes the club what it should be, which is hard work, graft getting a group of lads in and characters in, but, you know, that want to want to play for the club and got it, get it back to where it was last season because they, they understood the club last year. They got it, the lads that were involved, and Duff were a massive factor in that. And, you know, how how your club is represented off the pitch is also then spills onto the pitch. And I think the fact that we were doing a lot better off the pitch last season and, and making improvements there, you know, then went onto the pitch as well. There was no, like, it weren't, it, it weren't a coincidence. You know, it's a, it's a direct correlation. It's the same this season. The fact that we run like a circus again, you know, means they're on the pitch. Things are going to be for you as well because the players get older. It, hmm. the players will get unsettled. They'll see what's going on. They'll not want to be involved in in, in a situation like this. And it, you know, it really scares me where we go from here because you know, I look at who we could bring in. We should be we should be looking at the likes of um, you know. This sounds daft, but. Looking at likes of Warner just for the playoffs, just for his experience, just ask you know. And if they don't want to come in, then fair enough. 
we should be getting which um, you know for an interim period just to cover us till starting next year you know but i'm also thinking we need a long term we need to be also in long term as well and bringing the right person in um and there's plenty of young british coaches out there that that are good enough that can make the step up like we do like we saw good pro did well at cheltenham good character can come in really galvanize you know the club and that's what we need we need a leading figure that can come in and the need you know the need to make those changes and i i say it every time i come on there i think in, and this just says everything about the, you know, the situation that we're in. That you know, this is a massive period and a massive moment in the club moving forward. Because I really do fear, you know, that it, it's just gonna, I, I, you know, the way that I see it is this, Neil. If they're gonna, if they're gonna do the same amount of interest in the recruitment and and do the lack of backing that they've done this season, next season, if we got promoted to the championship, mm. I'd rather not be in that league. If I knew that we were going to get hammered each week, mm. because I knew that I know that what they're going to do is they bring a load of Conway type signings in. They won't spend the money, but they bring a lot of players in to try and cover the lack of quality in the signings. Because obviously, quality means money, and if they don't spend it, they'll just bring loads of lads in yeah. for two hundred grand, three hundred grand a year, um, a loan a year. Um, bring, but I'd rather us go from bottom, start again, and go and like it's which have done. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying we're going to be. What I'm saying is no, they, but, they start. Yeah. They had, they had to start again. They start from the bottom. They've got a good head coach and they've got a good vision. Same, you know, uh, and, and 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 then go again. And then even and, and then be stable. We've got to have a period of stability. There's got to be a breaking point where they've got to stop it. And mm -hmm. I don't believe that they can do it because I don't believe that they're aware, or I don't believe that they're competent enough to put the changes in that's required. And for me, that's why they need to, you know, if it were my, if it were my willing, I'd have them all out and just have a clean slate. But unfortunately, we've not got many interesting people coming in to buy the club, have we? So we're not in a position like a, like mm. a team, you know, that's going to attract sellers because obviously, you know, we've got, we've, we've got issues there. I mean, I hope we win, you know, I hope, I want us to win every game. Don't get me wrong, course. I, I want to win every game of football that we win. I, I hate it when we draw near mind lose. Mm. But I just don't feel, you know, I just don't. I'm not confident um, for the next two games, just due to what what we've said yeah. and who to come in. I don't know. There's no point even saying who's going to come in. There's no point even saying what no. name because no. it's going to be completely left field. It'll probably be Paul Parsons, who runs Royston Dynamos under tens. That's that, that type. Of, what, yeah. what that left field? Kinder appointment or Dominic Schrampen Klooper from Austria Vienna. That that sort of that sort yeah. of appointment. Do you know what I mean? That's 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 coached two games for Red Bull under eights and then done well. <laughs> done done well there, yeah. He's then, and then yeah. But that, I, I'm I'm making fun of it, but that's that's no, that's honestly no, what we'll no, what we'll go for. Yeah. But for me, we've got to go for somebody with league experience. What it should be is we've got to go for somebody with league experience or experience of English football, regardless of what nationality they are. You know, Ishmael, I'd, I'd even look at him. Um, but again, it's all about ambition. I know he left us to go to West Brom, but like, and then it goes back down to ambition again. You've got to match the ambition of the coach and you've got to yeah. grow with them. You can't just be like, all right, well, we've done all right. We've got, we've got you to fifth in the league and then... And then and then what? It's kind of like we've got to be like, right, we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna go there, and then we're gonna push on. We've got to. This is what the club have got to do. They're gonna take stock. I wish I could speak to somebody at the club, but unfortunately, mm. that won't happen. I'll probably get a, an arrest, arrest warrant as soon as I turn up at <laughs> Oakwell for uh, for high treason to the king uh, and to Julie. Um, but anyway, what I'm saying is this: they've, they've got to be careful what they do next. They've got to read the room. They've got to listen to the fans. They can't just keep ignoring the fans and keep blocking them on social media. They've got to listen to the concerns because they're paying customers yeah. and they care about the club deeply. It means a lot to the community, the, the club. You know, when the club does well, the town does well and vice versa. It, it's a good feeling, you know, and it's it's not it's not nice. Like, it's not nice. When we lose in the moment, I don't I don't get upset like I, like I should do. It's just yeah. like, all right, well, whatever. Um, okay. All down. I mean, you, 
I, I, I mean, kind of wrap it up like now, but it's like what you just said, Via. I looked at Duff Me last season. He brought so many models. He understood what it meant. He had uh, played down National Coal Mining Museum. He has had that military background. We'd had him up on moors. He, he, he made sure the team were aware with the community and what it meant to us, you know. Uh, and I think the fans bought into that. And you could tell the players, they were happy playing for him. They'd do out for him. You look at a strong character, and that's what I yeah. believe that we're, we're missing at the club. Not just on pitch, but also behind the scenes. I think we're missing... A strong character. What's not? Spe- I want to speak out a term, but challenge and question decisions. What's going off? I don't see that on pitch. I didn't see that on the sidelines with Collins and that is ranting and raving. And I'm looking at the players. Are you responding? No. You looked under Duff and responded. They responded. I'm thinking that's what you you're missing a character. And because I know that people say experience and will put a spin on it. Oh, yeah, played 200 league games for you know like Ponte Colliers. He could play 200 league games, whatever. I'm looking for yeah. a character and experience and a leader. But mm. I'm looking for a captain on pitch me. What's like, if chips are down and we it, it, it's shit, I'm expecting my captain to come up and put arm on our shoulder. Well, pick your ideas up. I'm, like, I'm not seeing that on pitch. I'm not, I'm seeing, as soon as we concede, the players arguing on us and it's your man, this, it's your man, finger pointing. Where's the captain and this is a rape? This is, get on with it. You don't see that. And this is where it stems from. Your databases can do all your fancy, you know, goals and this. Over and what, what is the, what is the person like? What is the mental state of that person? Is he a, a lad who you want behind you rather yeah. than in front of you and walking and leaving you? I'm wanting that. And again, is this going to change? It's like what you just said, Via Look. It don't matter what you see in betting. Don't I don't get to whatever you see in betting. There'd be someone off a complete radar. Neil Collins wants on, on betting uh, forums last season. Why should it be on this one? You know, why should it be? You're looking at like, I'm just looking here, Mike Williamson, uh, Damien Duff, Richie Wellens, Michael Duff, the, the, you know, decent names there. But then, like you say, you'll get someone who's like, you Google searching it, thinking, oh, where's he been from? You get somebody, you're get you going to get somebody who's a yes man, Neil Moore, you know, next time, because exactly. they had that with Duff, where Duff would, Duff would be a character, I'd imagine, that would question things. Yeah. Um. I imagine Collins was a bit more subservient and I think they're going to go down that route again where they're just going to get somebody to see a yes. I know we're moving away from that manager framework in, in, in league football more than what we used to. We don't get as many managers now. But you, you look at the best clubs in the world and you look at Ancelotti, Guardiola, Klopp, you know, and what they are, the characters. And what I'm not I'm saying we're going to get that calibre, you know, never. But what I'm saying is we need throughout the club those figureheads that can drive a vision forward and this is why I thought the director of football was a big thing unfortunately I thought that I, I would have liked somebody like a Craig Ignat or somebody like that to come in that's you know he were a head coach at Hartlepool he, you know I, he, he, won, he won my favourite players growing up and it's not about that but good pro knows the leagues mm. still relevant in the game good contacts but he knows the club and that was that you know knows what the club means and can be a good kind of like kind of like a bit of a a bit of a midpoint and i think the head coach is is massively important next because they've got to get they've got to let the recruitment you know um right but even if so whoever we bring in i'll i'll, I'll obviously want them to do well but nah let's make no mistake about it no matter what happens next with the said coach all eyes and judgment should be on the people behind the scenes because they've yeah. laid themselves bare They've opened themselves up now. There's nowhere to hide. There's, they can't hide behind the, you know, the carvery or they can't be hide behind the head coach. They've got to hide behind. There's nowhere for them to hide. And so we'll, we'll, whoever comes in, want them to do well, but realise it's them above them that's the issue, not yeah. not the coach themselves. Because um, ultimately they're the people that make the, 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 the key decisions. I mean, tomorrow... Funnily enough, mate, I'm going, and I don't know why I'm going. I think I'm going out of probably pity. I'm going because my dad wants me to go, and I've not, I've not really spent much time with him over the last three years. Mm. And it's going to be a weird feeling going back. Um, and it's kind of going in against everything that I'm saying, but I also, that's my, it's kind of like, in the end, I will always love the football club. Like, I'd, you know, I'd give everything, anything to play for that shirt. Any Barnes and fan would for free. Mm. But it means it, it, it saddens me to see what the club's become 
it really does like it gets me down to be honest like when i think about it and that's why i've had to stay away but tomorrow I'm, i am gonna go because i want to get behind the lads and i want to get you know i want to get you know we need to be that 12th man tomorrow mm. for, for the for the for the lads and just see what way we can go and just just even if, over these next two games no matter what the result is just just get everything and just represent that shirt with pride and graft and put everything in and if and if we're not good enough on the over those two games then i, I don't think we will be but wherever at least i know for a fact that we've they've done with best that we can what will madden me is if i know for a fact that there's lads that are not getting it 10 out of 10. yeah, yeah. No, no matter on performance no matter what kind of form you're in just get everything leave everything it's on good. that pitch yeah. don't have any regrets and if we lose we lose whatever then good luck to bolton you know if they're better than us over the two legs then so be yeah. it but just don't leave anything on the pitch and get you know we'll, we'll at least be close at least get behind the lads that's the only thing that we could do now is i know the lads a, a lot of them have, have been poor this this season but we don't know everything that goes on mm. we only see what happens on that pitch and we don't see the day-to-day -day stuff um and we've just got to get behind them because we they are capable of do, you know as we saw against derby at home you know they turned up then and got a good result and you know it sounds daft but we were we were two points off second at one point and that that's fucking mad to, to see where we are now we shot ourselves in the foot again um but but for me the, the final matter is is this is that the, the you know i want I, I want the people that's in the club out um i'm sure i'm not the only one but I also am a realist in knowing that unfortunately we're not going to get that much interest. So what can we do in the meantime? We've got to keep holding them accountable and we've got to keep speaking up. And if they keep trying to quiet us, we we just speak more. But unfortunately, what will start happening is people will vote with their feet and then that's when it'll come to a, a place where it's like, yeah, this is not nice to watch. And yeah. Yeah. But but oh, but for tomorrow. I'm going to go and get behind them for my sins um, probably take a few vodkas in the ground and sneak them in just to kind of um, level me a bit because I'll, you know, <laughs> it, it stresses me out watching Barnsley, um, especially when um, we, we've got certain players in the team, but <laughs> whatever. I'll get behind them. Do you know what I mean? I'll get behind them no matter what. But it's it, it's frustrating neil because we feel like we're on his way back and then we're, we're back we're, we're back even before square one and it's so frustrating yeah. and i know we've gone on for an hour now um but it's like it's a bit of a counseling therapy session i think for all barnsley fans this just just speaking about these issues and, and getting it out because you know it's weird because it's only a game of football but it's more than that isn't it it's, it's more than uh, that when you strip it back and you see where we are at the minute and yeah, that's what it is, isn't well, it? it's our, it's our religion, isn't it? Really, I'm yeah. not a religious person, but if I were, it would be to sport, you know, bands left FC would be, and it, it's um, it's a strange feeling. Like it's not nice feeling when you it's it's, no. it's when you can't describe it to your missus when she's like, "Why are you so bothered about him doing well mm. or not doing well?" And it's like you just don't get it, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's um, right, yeah, it's right. Yeah. Don't get it, but I mean. I hope tomorrow we can get a win, mate. All, all yeah. I want is um, just just to just to come up with a bit of pride and just have a bit of respect after the, you know, just team. Just I just don't want to get embarrassed. That's the only yeah. thing. Um, but it shouldn't be like this because it's playoffs tomorrow. It's playoffs, isn't it? Yeah, but it and it feels it's like we just got feeling. relegated. Yeah, it's a weird. You know, that's how it feels at the moment. But it's like there's no one else to blame but them. They've got to take <laughs> responsibility. They've created yeah. this own, this own issue on themselves. They can't look at anybody else but themselves and, and that's the thing that they won't do they won't take any responsibility and until they do we're not going anywhere and and that i know that's again a negative but you know it's just facts and that's what i'll always do is, is just say it as it is and if you don't like it then that's fine but I'll, I'll but i'll just keep calling it out um as i always have done and if it is if there is positive things to say which i, I do say positive things then i will say them but if there's not, I'm not just going to say it for the sake of it. Yeah. I'm not blinded by loyalty. I will, I will call things out because they need to be spoken about. And that's what it's all about. It's like having an opinion. It's been respectful. It's not like yeah. stating, stating out what's not been been said. And like you said, a lot of fans will relate to this because it's like not a new issue was just created. It's been building up and building up and building up. And again, 
uh, there's a lot of accountability when he's to be taken by the board. And in, in fairness, some of the players as well, when you look at him. Yeah. And like you said, we come, we're, we're, in, we're in semi-finals or a playoff. And although we are going to back him, there's many other uh, thousands uh, going away to Bolton as well. What you want from the lads now, even more so, is for them to like give it all. Don't be just yeah. going down like a damp squib. That's you've you've got the lads have got to as well as the club and Martin Devane will say you need to get behind lads and give some. It's got to work both ways mm. as well. The lads have also on the pitch because that white line we've got to give something for us fans to like turn around and give something to cheer about. Well, got, you like, know, and and especially I know when we beat Bolton, it's because we were we, last year we were well well organised, but it's the basics. Do the basics, yeah. like don't go behind it for ten minutes. Like we've got this habit of. Conceding goals early and that's become a, a mental thing. It's not to mm. do with it's a mental thing that they're expecting to concede and so they will, rather than just being like, right, we're at home first game. We'll start quickly. We'll start the front foot. You know, even if we don't win tomorrow, just stay in the tie. Mm. Just you know, just keep things tight. Do the basics well, and I'll just keep it simple. Meet football. I wouldn't be trying to play football yeah. from the back because we can't do it. We ain't got the place to do it. Get it in their half. One or two touch. You know, when they're on the ball, trying to win it back as best as you can. Do you know? Just do the go, go back to basics. Go, yeah. Do the simple stuff. Don't try and overcomplicate it because you know it's it's going to be a big occasion for a lot of them. There's a lot at stake. Obviously, you know it's um, a lot of people watching, and I think we will raise the game a bit. I think we will. I think we have also bottled it at times this season when it's mattered. But we also we played all right against Portsmouth when. You know they, you know they got promoted that night. But I also think they played all right, and mm. on another occasion we could have got something from that game. But what I'm saying is the better caliber of opponent. I think we we rise to the occasion a bit more. Um, we might bottle it tomorrow. We might not. But we, but the lads have got to. There's enough pros in that team. Cadden's been about the block a bit. Cole's yeah. a season pro now. Even Williams, you know, I, I, whether he's captain or not is another question in, in another debate. But. Regardless, he's, he's you no know, two hundred games. I think now you've got um, Kane, Phillips. The, 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 there's lads like you've said now. We, we can point at the board all, all we want as well. But on the pitch, it's those lads that wearing that, them eleven red shirts that need to also, you know, stand up. Yeah. And and rather than because what we do is we shirk responsibility onto others a lot of the time and and kind of like when over the years we've kind of like looked at one player to kind of lead us, we need to be 11 leaders on that pitch and, you know, and just represent us and just get everything. And for your, for your own personal pride as professional footballers, you know, you get paid very well to do what you do and it's a privilege to be a professional footballer and, you know, kind of, if it's a lot of their last game, last couple of games for the club, just get everything. Mm. I wouldn't mind it if they leave as long as I know for a fact that over the next 180 minutes they get everything. And regardless mm. of the result, I'll I'll be I'll be like, yeah, fair enough. Mm. We did all we could. But but what will frustrate us is if I go down tomorrow and I see lads backing out of tackles and lads not learning from the mistakes, they've got to do the basics right. They've mm. got to get the ball out of the feet, get it in their half when we've got the ball, and when we're defending, just just mark just I know it sounds basic, but this is what we're being guilty of, just good. not marking as men. Just, just falling asleep when it matters. Staying focused, not getting, getting silly free kicks away. Because mm. you know Bolton, when we conceded that second goal, we're from a free kick, getting a yeah. silly free kick away. Same against Northampton. Yeah. You know Cosgrove pushing him centre back like he were Hulk Hogan. Just like yeah. game management. Just, you just this is the thing again about leaders. Just in Blackpool away, it's, there's so many occasions where we conceded at wrong times in game. Just stay in the game. Just shut shop. Just shut shop. Just don't game anything. Get into half time. Even if it's nil nil, get into half time, regroup, go again. Yeah. But for me, in my opinion, just stay in the game first 20, work your way into the game. We're not going to be full of confidence because the form that we're in. Whether he starts Jala or not, I don't know. But I, I wouldn't be leaving him on pitch till 10 minutes to go. Get him on with 25 minutes left at least. Game because yeah. he's got to affect the game time to affect the game. Mm. For me, I would get a four at the back. I would rip this free out, but it's not probably not going to happen. I get mm. Williams out at right back. I put Earl and Deja Vigny in centre defence. Roberts in goal. Probably Cadden at left back with his experience. And when he and when he goes forward, I, I like Cadden when he goes forward, but he's also been in guilty, been in no man's land too often. Mm. But first half of the season, I thought he looked really good. It was it's so strange how he's like his form's completely short. 
mm. Cole, um, I know Kane, Connell, and Phillips. So that's eight. And then I'd start McAtee. I'd actually start Cosgrove up top, and I'd, I'd start Jarlow personally, and have mm. a four-three-three, um, and get pace either side. Two two little lads on the ball, and get get Cosgrove as your yeah, main yeah, like yeah. kind of focal point. For me, Cole shouldn't be starting. Is he's bang out of form? Mm. You know, I know he's I know he's top scorer for us this season, but he, he looks a shadow. And this is a you know, and he starts to question. You don't want to question the 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 performance levels and whether whether the the down tools. But he is out of contract end of the season. It doesn't look like he's. It just yeah, looks a completely cool. different player, and it's. Uh, it, you know, I, I want I want you know for me I I, I think you'll probably start Cole because he's got a goal in him, hasn't he? And Cosgrove, again, he's been disappointing, I think, this season. But also, I think he's been not used properly by Collins, but I think he will start um, Cole. But that's the team that I'd go for. But mm. I, I want us to be on the front foot rather than, you know, we're at home first. And obviously, that's a disadvantage because Bolton can come and play for a, for a draw, really, and mm. go into that second game in front of their full house. And, you know, it'll be a good atmosphere at Bolton. And they've got a good home record this season, so they'll back themselves. But for us, we've got to try and hit them hard and just stay in the tie. But as you know, try and try and break the track, try, try and break the tie down into two. Just focus on this game, see where we're at, end of it, and then go again. We can't be thinking, uh, you know, that second game. We've got to be focused just on tomorrow, trying to win that game of football. And just trying to keep it tight. Just do the basics. Mm-hmm. And I'll just be saying to Devaney. Just, just go out there and get everything for the, you know, just get everything, and and they'll, they'll, you know, because if, if they do, we'll back them, won't we? Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. It's as simple as that. Like if they get, if they get hundred percent, we'll, we'll be behind them regardless. Yeah, aren't we? Aren't we? You know what I mean? And I hope that they just can do that, and you know, then that's all they can do, really. But yeah, um, that's my piece on it, mate. Anyway, I know we've gone yeah. well over an hour, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No, it's right, it's right. Uh, yeah, Bolton game, two big games coming up, uh, like what Luke said there. Bolton will be looking for this as a, as a kind of a free hit. We can come here and play out for a draw. If they start high, then it's going to be even more struggle for us. But two games, cup finals, how we see them. All what we ask for is from the players to get the all, you know, and then the fans will uh, reciprocate that as well. Yeah, it's a winnable game. Play. I mean, we can win it. If we turn up, we can win it. Of course we can. Obviously, yeah. form says that we're probably going to be slight underdogs, but we're at home. So, you know, let's go out there and, you know, let's forget about this, you know, sh- you know, this crap home form record this season. It, you know, it's really cost us, but it's done with now that. Yeah. It's yeah. This ne- just this one game. Let's go out there, get everything, get on front foot, be aggressive in the faces. Nice, quick football, simple. Just do the basics and you never know. You never know. Football's a funny old game. It would be so Barnsley for us to actually, after all this, win these <laughs> exactly. two games and get to Wembley. Uh, that, yeah. that's, that would just sum, up, sum us up in a, in a, in a wouldn't it, that? In a nutshell, yeah. Yeah, it would. Uh, and I think many Barnsley fans would be open for that for a day out at Wembley. But yeah, yeah. Like, and but, you know, see, where, see, see where it gets us. Because look at Wednesday last year, all the people they had, and you know, they ended up getting promoted. Yeah. So, you know, it's... Yeah. <laughs> football's a funny old game, but you know, for tomorrow, I'm not even thinking about Bolton or Wembley or anything like that because that'd be disrespectful towards Bolton and mm-hmm. the form that we're in. We've got to be realistic as well. We've just got to focus on tomorrow, start well, stay in the tie, and just don't let it. If if we're not going to win the game, just don't be out of the tie altogether. Just stay stay in the tie yeah. and, and manage manage the game and um, take some momentum into the second game if you can, even if we don't win it. And on that note, I think Luke summed it up pretty well. Uh, stay in the tie and uh, we've still got a second leg to play. So if you are going, uh, enjoy, your, enjoy your day at uh, Bolton. If you're watching or listening back on this as well, because uh, I know some people uh, listen to it on earpods and stuff like that, I appreciate it. And again, let us know your comments about it in the comments below. A lot of things we've covered on, you know, the ownership and how it's come back full circle, the managed situation, we are in the playoffs, time in a second of Collins, a lot of questions and a lot of debate. So again, appreciate you for taking time out. Uh, You're welcome, mate. Uh, and thanks for Luke as well. Um, it's always a pleasure because Luke will strip it back and analyse it and it, it, it all gets 
for things that have been like forgot about it past, uh, it gets really brought back up when it comes full circle and kind of makes a bigger picture. You've got to, yeah, and, yeah, he's got he's, you've got to put context to it, and Luke always does that as well. And you can mm. relate to it to certain areas and it pinpoints certain issues, and it, it, you can see the trend, the worrying trend as well, not a, a trend in the right direction. It's a worrying trend where it seems to be going back in, in, into the same mindset and the recruitment, and not just for players, but for managers as well. Uh, so people, what uh, you know, are new and watching, and they're kind of, oh, what are you going back there for? If you look on the previous videos, you can like it's kind of relate to it. I think, yeah, well, do you know what? Look, we're right there, that, that pressing away game, or it kind of identifies certain things and it can pinpoint them. It, it's like a map, but a, a map in a wrong direction kind of thing. Yeah. Like, well, you've got to, you, you know, yeah. you, you, when, when you're coming on, you know, when I'm doing a video, I'll, I'll not just say, oh, it's, it's shit that, like, can. If mm. you've got to go you've got to you've got to lay the foundations as to yeah. how we got to this stage and it's kind of like you've got to go over key events and be like is the it's the it's the mentality and the psychology behind going behind it yeah and, and then how we've got it and how we can get out of it and if we can't get out of it then obviously it is what it is but that's why i always try and bring is is, is that and i've tried i never make it personal like you know i've got feelings about it you know obviously but I don't share them openly because that's not fair to do that because that person can publicly, you know, say yeah. whatever. But what I will say is, obviously, as a, as a you know, as a, as a fan of the football club, you, you have a right to say how you feel. But it's all, you know, it's got to be within, you yeah, know, it's got to be fair yeah, and it's got to be, you know, yeah. it's got to be respectful. So I always try and keep it that. And I know I have a, the odd joke and stuff like that, but it's never personal. It's just, no. it's just my way of making fun of a shit, shit, shit situation um, mm. a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all being well, we've got two games coming up. Yeah, all we ask for is that players can put in a shift. People was watching, appreciate you uh, taking time out for watching and uh, leave your comments below. Like I say, all being well, we can be move forward, but I think what's going to fit past it's going to take some doing. But once again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. One thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>